What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about the great smog of London. So, to be honest, I've never heard of this before, but apparently this was a pretty big event that actually happened in London involving smog, which is like really dirty fog, right? Or smoke and <laughs> well, well, now I'm just curious and really want to learn more about what exactly happened during this time. So let's take a look. On the 5th of December, 1952, an unusually heavy fog descended on London in the UK. You see, when you put it like that, an unusually heavy fog descended upon London. It's like, is that really a big deal? Like, how big of a deal was this? Is this an event that all British people are taught about and you, you know about the great smog of 1952, because um, again, uh, I, I don't think any Americans really know about this event, so I don't know. I'm kind of <laughs> curious how big a deal this was and what, ex what exactly did this cause? It remained in place for five days, bringing the capital to a standstill, oh. and yet it caused no panic. Fog oh. was a common phenomenon within London, and as dramatic as this fog was, it was thought of as just another example of typically British weather. Okay. <laughs> so far, I'm, I'm whelmed. Maybe even underwhelmed, but whelmed at most. <laughs> There's a five-day fog, and according to the narrator, Londoners were like, eh, Ah, whatever. <laughs> it's just another week in London. Not a big deal. Okay, so is that the end of the video? Are we done? <laughs> this sounds like no one thought too much of this. It wouldn't be until much later that the true cost of the Great Smog of 1952 was realized. Okay. London is an incredibly densely populated city. With so many people and so much industry concentrated in one place, it has always suffered from poorer air quality than other cities in the UK. Sure, sure. Even okay. in Victorian times, the city was infamous for its foggy streets. Huh. Writers at the time referred to these fogs as pea supers, an allusion to the colour and density of the fog being similar to that of soup. Soup? It's like they were living in a soup. <laughs> oh my... Um... Well, whether they thought it was a big deal or not, it sounds pretty unpleasant. But funny enough, something that was so common that if you lived in London during this time, you didn't think much about it. There was just always some kind of vague, soupy fog um, due to the industries uh, around London. So this is like industrial produced fog from factories. It's not like natural for you know fog that occurs in nature sometimes this is bad for you like so so on one hand it seems like it was just normal but on the other hand it seems like this it shouldn't have been normal uh this would be a big really big deal in today today's day uh violating the health codes there was some improvement in London's air quality as the city entered the 1900s. Okay. But by 1952, pollution was still very much a problem. Ugh. At that time, coal was still a common power source with numerous coal-burning power plants situated within the boundaries of London. Okay. Coal was also an important domestic fuel. Londoners had been burning a great deal of it to heat their homes oh. during the particularly cold winter of 1952. Oh, wow. 1952, by the way. Not, you know, totally that long ago. There could be people alive today that experienced this great smog of 1952. You know, it's only like 70-some years ago. This was back when people were burning coal, act actual coal, in their own 
fireplaces to heat their homes. Wow. With the Second World War having concluded less than a decade ago, resources were still a little thin on the ground. Okay. Most people, therefore, were reduced to burning low-quality coal, which didn't combust very cleanly. Mm. Okay. The sum of all these factors was that London produced a huge amount of air pollution. Oh my god. Weather conditions on the 5th of December 1952 conspired to trap this pollution within the city. A complete lack of wind combined with a zone of high atmospheric pressure, effectively pushing the warm air rising from chimneys and smokestacks straight back down to street level. Oh, interesting. So this was the perfect storm, literally. <laughs> Weather in, around London on this date caused all the pollution and smog that's being produced by the factories and by the homes to get trapped and, like, stay in London with, with that nowhere to escape to, really, and fall back down onto the people. More than usual, even. Okay. This sounds very this sounds very bad. Um, I, I I wonder how bad this actually got. Like, did people act, die from this, or like cra walk into walls because you can't see where you're going, or like there's there's varying levels of severity this could have uh, had. I I wonder how bad this is. The byproducts of domestic fireplaces and factories all over the city quickly formed a foggy blanket wow. thick enough to cover all but the tallest of buildings. Wow. They, they actually have some photos? They actually have photos of this. Yeah, you can't even... You can barely see a car in the background. Like, this picture looks like there's only, like, a hundred feet of visibility, and then you can't see anything further. That's, that's very significant. That is dense. The fog was severe on the first day, and it got worse with each day that passed, mm. with factories continuing to belch pollution into the atmosphere at an astonishing rate. Oh my, it, even though this was happening, the, like, the factories didn't care. They were like, keep going! <laughs> gotta pump out more shoes! <laughs> we gotta sell shoes! Meet the quota! They're just, like, making more and more of this smog. Uh, even though I'm sure at the time everyone was aware that this was happening. A million kilograms, or 1,000 metric tons, of smoke, and 2 million kilograms, or 2,000 metric tons, of carbon dioxide, for wow. example, were released each and every day, oh my swamping God. the city. Wow. Londoners were used to fog, but this was on another level. Oh my gosh. Look at this. It looks like apocalyptic dystopian he's got like a weird mask on and you can barely see into the background like seriously oh my God. this would have been genuinely scary to live in this fog was extremely thick and dense yeah restricting visibility to just a few strides yeah in some places it had a yellowish or greenish hue and many reported that it stank of rotten eggs <laughs> This is like the apocalypse. Seriously. What were people thinking at the time? Like, oh, this is just how it's going to be <laughs> from now on. Like, did they even understand that there was, like, weather events happening, making it extra bad? Or, I don't know. I don't know what people were thinking in 1952 about this. Something which led people to don masks or other face coverings whenever they had to venture outside. Yeah. Despite the noxious appearance of the fog, few people were worried about air quality. <laughs> Visibility was a much more pressing issue. The city's transport huh. networks seized up. Barely oh. any planes could take off or land, and the vast majority of flights were diverted to other airports. Oh, funny enough. What I'm most concerned about, like health, people didn't really care about. <laughs> like what this was doing to their lungs and to their bodies. But uh, one thing you can't ignore is the visibility. People couldn't drive. People couldn't... Airplanes couldn't fly. So, I mean, man, imagine the implications of that on London. Like, London would just shut down, effectively. I guess you could still walk places. Ha! 
Walk. <laughs> Who does that? Walking. <laughs> Buses and other forms of above-ground public transit were cancelled, as drivers simply couldn't see far enough to safely complete their routes. Wow. This left the London Underground as the only available means of public transport All right. for millions of Londoners. Right. Private transport was equally affected. Roads became blocked by multiple accidents, and even those roads that were still moving were doing so with agonising slowness. So you can barely take a car. Well, everyone has to go slow down to a crawl. There's crashes everywhere. The buses are shut down. You can... Everyone is taking the underground. Millions of people, by the sound of it. I can imagine that. I don't know if the underground is, like, busy as it is or crowded, but imagine everyone in the whole city having to take it. While the fog caused travel chaos, it also represented an opportunity for thieves. Oh, yeah. With almost zero visibility and police unable to get around, crime yeah. skyrocketed. Oh my god, this is getting scarier and scarier. Really. Oh my gosh. Th things you don't even think about. You can't drive your car. You can hardly get around the city. There is no visibility, so thieves, robbers, criminals... Are, are having the time of their lives. This is getting, like, worse and worse. There were hundreds of reports of robberies and muggings, with the wow. thieves getting away under cover of the fog. Yeah, yeah. In addition to this wave of opportunistic crime, most ordinary activities came to a halt. Okay. Sporting fixtures were cooled <laughs> off when it became apparent that the spectators could not see the players, the players could not see one another, and nobody at all could see the ball. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at this. That's crazy how they have photos of this. And it really does show you how absurd it was. You, you, <laughs> I just imagine them trying to play uh, football. And you can't even see the ball. Oh my gosh. Workers were sent home from their offices or could not make it into work in the first place. Right. Schools were closed, and even theatre performances were affected. Several were cancelled when fog seeped in through windows and doors and filled the auditorium. Oh my god. Every... So London has shut down. L no, London can't do anything. No, nothing can happen. This is like... In the beginning of this, they were saying it wasn't a big deal. This is a very big deal. This is a huge deal. The whole city is shut down. The rest of the world is just going on like normal. And London is literally stuck in its own little world. Smog. <laughs> Smoggy world. Um, just shut down. And, and I imagine they have no idea how long it, this is going to be. And yet they, they're saying people weren't that worried. I don't understand that. If I were in London during 1952, I'd be really, really worried. Personal accounts from those who were alive at the time give some idea of what it must have been like to navigate London during the smog. Yeah. People recall feeling their way along hedges on their way to school what? and holding hands with their friends so as not to become separated. Elsewhere, commuters were escorted through the streets by policemen bearing torches or wow. else used the light glinting off overhead electric trolley lines to find their way. When, or if, people arrived at their destinations, <laughs> many found their clothes blackened with soot and couldn't stop coughing for days. This is... A, this is horrible. This is the worst. I can't believe I've never heard of this. This is clearly a huge deal. Like, I've never heard of a city straight up shutting down for a week. Uh, well, it sounds like people tried to keep doing things. Your clothes would be ruined. Your lungs would be ruined. You'd get sick. You can't... You have to feel your way along the hedges, <laughs> grabbing random stuff to find your way anywhere. That's crazy. Some people reported taking lamps out into the street and still seeing nothing. Around the Isle of Dogs, many people noted that the fog was too thick for them to even see their own feet. What? what? 
What? <laughs> is that is that is that true? If you can't see your own feet, I don't think you should even go outside. If you can't see your own feet, like I've never even I I I didn't know fog or smog could be that thick. That's insane. Actors found themselves in high demand, but at the same time struggled to complete house calls because of the fog. Hmm. Given that the underground was the only remaining viable way to get around, mm -hmm. queues for tickets stretched into the thousands. Oh my gosh. For five days, London endured the Great Smog. <sighs> yeah. And then, as the weather changed, the fog cleared away. So, so that's, what, that's all it was. Weather. Weather related. And it did eventually go away. Okay. I still think it'd be terrifying at the time not knowing if it is gonna go away, or... That must have been scary. The city, which had been trapped in a perpetual twilight for five long days, yeah. started moving again. Huh. Roads cleared, bus services resumed, and Londoners returned to work after one of the strangest weekends that many had ever experienced. Absolutely the strangest... week. <laughs> like... <sighs> All that crime going on? Like, all this madness? Was London able to, like, recover from this? This is... <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing, truly. It took some time before the real impact of the fog was known. Oh. Respiratory illness is a quiet killer. Oh. And in this case, those it killed were mostly the sick or the elderly. Oh, no. Doctors in hospitals across the capital noted that they'd experienced an unusually high level of mortality during the fog, and doubtless made an association between the two. Oh no. This smog had lasting effects. People died. Like, later, there's a delayed reaction. People died of this, of the smog inhalation. Wow. The average Londoner, however, had no reason to think that the smog was anything other than just some very severe, inclement weather. Oh. Months would pass. They didn't even, like, realize what they were breathing in. It was like this industrial house coal smog. Very bad for you. Months would pass before the wave of deaths and respiratory illnesses was noticed. Oh and even God. once it had been noticed, the impact was extremely difficult to gauge. Yeah. Many of those who were affected didn't pass away during the fog, but instead had their lives massively shortened. Oh my Someone god. Someone who died prematurely from respiratory illness a year after the Great Smog, for example, might not have been counted as part of the death toll. This is terrible. This is so sad. It was kind of like a fun, funny-ish little, you know, story. Like, oh, smog, shut down the city, robbers, mugging people. Okay, maybe it wasn't that funny, but, <laughs> but it's like, okay, interesting. Now it's just sad. Now it's just sad that lots of people died years, years after this. Even so, the most conservative estimates as to the number of deaths state that at least 4,000 people were killed by the smog. What? The smog and the chaos it caused were a wake-up call for many. Hundreds yeah. of those who endured it noted that the experience changed their attitude towards the environment. Sure. It certainly moved air quality up the political agenda. And in 1956, the Clean Air Act was introduced. Mm. This legislation made mandatory the use of smokeless fuels in built-up areas. Ah, okay. So, the only bright side to this story might be that uh, it caused some attention to be called to the health, you know, concerns of smog and burning coal and inhaling this kind of stuff. And, you know, it, it brought some attention to controlling pollution and air quality, and that's, it's sad that it took this event for that to happen, but I guess, you know, uh, maybe it's something you have to learn only through experiencing something this drastic. Oh my gosh, this was crazy.
Um, this is <laughs> also very interesting. This was by Fascinating Horror. I gotta give this a like. I did like this video. That was scary, <laughs> sad, pretty fascinating. Like I said, never heard of this before. I don't know if this is something you learn in British history class, perhaps, but I thought this was interesting. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on the great smog of London. Uh, and if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and learning about UK culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.